Day is upon us. Worth noting as our chief steward here in our Racing.com commentary box, Simon Marshall noted a protest he thought was coming at Morville is certainly being seen out as we speak. Second versus first, interference in the home straight. So we'll, we'll see what plays out between 11 and 1 in that eighth event at Morpherville. Back here, it's the Katnaz Jewelers Handicap Benchmark 78, 1400. Here to shock last year, still trained by Brent Stanley at the time, and Tatum Bull defeating Polanco and Mayfair Spirit. Wicklow Town defeated Just Folk and Scantoon two years ago. Horse one, St. Lawrence. Carleen Heffel with the one and a half kilo claim, bringing this galloper back to 61 kilos, Ben, as he tries to make it six from seven. Yeah, it was wide no cover off a slow speed, albeit, and then rolled back to the inferior ground, kept kinking to win first up. That was a strong race. He had Barbie's Fox close up behind him. She's gone on and run well and then won at stakes level. You'd think he might take further improvement out of the race. Maps for the right run, either on speed or just behind the leaders. I think he deserves to be a short price favourite. He's tightened up since that first up run. He's moving well. He's got a great attitude. He's got quite a bit of scope and athleticism about him. He's not a bulky horse, and he's stretch of the imagination. So he's trained on well since that first up win. A little weight swing for the two turbo based on the level weights at which he met St Lawrence here, two back. You're not far behind St Lawrence there. Ran the second fastest last 200 of the race in Sydney last time out. I guess the concern for him is it's been a tough day to run on from a long way back and he might have to go back from the draw. He's been maintained well. He's parading well. Again, holding condition, no negatives. Three and four, scratch five, Planko trying to break now a thousand plus day drought. Yeah, that's the concern, but he should be fitter for two runs back from a spell. He's suited by the rise in distance third up, so um, if you can find his best, he can certainly run well. He's getting close to, to peak Venus. I think those runs have helped him. There's probably a touch more improvement to come, Ben, but uh, he's getting there and improving with each run. Six are scratching. Mark Connors knows when to bring them down to Caulfield. He does so here with a seven Danish Prince. Who was too far back last start, but I think can race much closer to the speed, even even in the first couple today from a soft draw. Uh, should be at peak fitness maps for a good run. I do think others have stronger form, though. It looks fit. It looks nice in the coat. Just some of those that have been in the warmer climate showing that to today. Slightly warmer up in New South Wales. Fit and well, parading nicely. Eight and nine are scratching to the ten. Netanyahu's had a little bit of a break since the first up run during the Swan Hill Carnival. Might take improvement from it. Was in the wrong part of the track in that aforementioned first up run. I think he's better suited rising in distance. Whether he needs one more would be my query, but can put himself on speed in a race where there's not a huge amount of pace after scratchings. He's a horse that normally parades well today. He's no different, and despite the fact that he's had a gap between runs, he presents nicely second up. 11 scan tune, fourth run here off, nearly two years off, and of course ran third in this race two years ago with 59 kilos after Celine Gordray's claim carries 55 and a half here. Yeah, might be ready now fourth up off a long break. Might be much better suited on a firmer surface. Does drop in weight after the claim. Can roll forward on speed. That's a positive. Yeah, nice and fit now. I thought paraded well at the start of this preparations. Continued to improve. Ready to go. Leon and Troy Corsten take the wraps off an American import here, the 12 Christmas Diamond. It's been specced in the market too. Um, making a Australian debut off two jump outs was fourth in the latest underwriting I thought might have to go back from the barrier which might make things tricky but hard to line the form up good base of fitness there obviously first time seen but looks bright and alert no negatives from the yard but no profile 13 serious liaisons had a change of trainer since the five length defeat to St Lawrence this one's been specced in the market too drops in class the blinkers come off um, good horse on his day two from 22 the issue Robust horse, no different with the change in stables. So he's a little bit woolly. He's been clipped underneath, but he's holding good condition and nice and fit. 14 is scratching. 15 Zamawi comes here off for running the Leilani final. Did enough second up coming from last year in a race won by a hard fit leader, but um, could improve fitter third up. Um, might need one more, and, and this is. I would prefer her back against her Progressing own Progressing nicely, I would say, heading around with a pony. Can get a little bit on the toe in the yard. Pretty good parade there. 16 is scratching. Craig Newitt trying to bookend the Bletchingley Stakes meeting. He won the first on Ouroboros. He rides first mate here. Too good, producing a big finish off a slow speed with a big weight in a weaker race last time out. It would be fitter for that. Drops in weight. Maps for a soft run. I think he's outside of the favourite among the better hopes. Strong fit boy, parading well. No real negatives from the yard. 7-6-1, the numbers you need in the quaddy. Cute as the value. Varvia and ingratiating for Godolphin, taking out the second and third legs. St Lawrence, our race favourite here, would give you a dividend of just a tick under $1,800 for 100%. And it's... 
You're on top selection, Ben, and one of your best of the day. Yeah, I thought he was the best of the day. Um, there's no flash odds about him, but he won a stronger race last time out. Might have further improvement to come. Maps for a good run with the way the track has been playing. There's not really too many negatives. Just has to hold his form. Turbo, probably the next best horse, but he probably has a map disadvantage as opposed to St Lawrence. Polanco's getting fitter, can improve. Scantude can be on speed, which I think is going to be an advantage. But I think if St Lawrence can hold his form, he should be really hard to beat. And look, he's a, a short price favourite, Ben, as, as you said, but he's improved since that first up run and uh, he's parading really well. I think he's close to peak fitness. He doesn't carry a lot of condition. He's pick of the yard for me outside of the obvious in St Lawrence. I thought Netanyahu on the fresh side paraded well. He generally does and he paraded well again. So look Looking away from St Lawrence, who was the pick of the yard, impressed with the parade of number 10, Netanyahu. OK, punters, we're in the red here. St Lawrence, clearly the best back runner at $1.80. Looking for a good ride here from Carlene Heffel, who won earlier on Molly Nickers. So, uh, all right, here we go. Let's have a look at uh, the markets. Outside of that, what I'll do is I'll give you, in terms of turnover, where the money is. One St Lawrence, 11, a Scantoon. And then we'll go down to number 10, Netanyahu. And then number 7, Dane. Prince. They're by the numbers. 1, 11, 10 and 7 if you're playing the exotics, but clearly the best back. Race 9, number 1, St Lawrence in the last year to blast out. OK, folks, you win some, you lose some uh, more. Don't forget, for free and confidential support, call the 1800 number and visit the gambling helpline. And don't forget, Wednesday, Wednesday, Sandown, of course, Hillside we are, all races. If you happen to run second or third with your fixed odds betting, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Hooroo, good luck in the last. Pre-race chat here with Graham Beggers. Scantoon tackles the race which he ran third two years ago. Graham, appreciate your time. How's the horse finding some of that 2021 fitness and form now fourth up? Yeah, well, he's had the uh, three runs prior to today and uh, we feel that he's just starting to hit his straps. Uh, and also, I think today a big plus getting on back on some sort of reasonable surface and you know he's been carrying very big weights at sand down his last couple of starts and uh, you know just struggled in the ground so hopefully uh, getting back on top of the ground today and taking that weight relief off his back and uh, you know we expect the horse to run very well he's just started to really uh, sharpen up in his work at home and, and do better in the stable so we expect him you know, to run very well. He drew in when placed behind Wicklow Town in the race a couple of years ago in a similar size field. It's a different story today. What does that mean for Celine's plan? Oh, look, he always begins very well. We'll just roll in a sensible matter forward. Uh, we don't want him sort of racing hard up that hill. So I just told her just try to control it and uh, get up over, over quite gradually and, uh, you know, and, and just give him every opportunity to be able to finish his race off. Graham, all the best. Thank you. Graham Begg talking about the chances of Scantoon. Fourth up from a break, well backed. Eight into six dollars in the VOP late, and I think is one of the horses that can go forward. They're the quaddy approximates where St Lawrence is clearly the favoured way home. You had to get cute as a bit of an upset in the first leg, and we've had the two favourites win since. So if you're smart enough in the relatively small field to uh, Either go to the field or just include cute as because you liked her, then uh, you're going to be healthily rewarded if you can get the winner of the last race today. Speed-wise, it's a really interesting race. I did think from wider draws, Netanyahu and Scantoon uh, would roll forward. And then from the inside draws, St Lawrence and Danish Prince kick up. Maybe first mate just in behind them. But there's four uh, horses that have the ability to roll forward. It'll be interesting to see whether Carleen Heffel aboard this favourite wants to own the race from the front or if there's pressure from Netanyahu and Scantoon, maybe take a sit. Perhaps Danish Prince as well could be another one that, that could lead. But um, that would be the, the little interesting um, thing to watch early in the race, Warren. Agree, and we saw that in the previous sprint races are different, but Blake Shin very conscious of trying to get some clear galloping room on ingratiating, and, and I don't think Carlene will want to be dictated to back near the inside, and she probably hasn't got a horse with the explosive burst of acceleration that she had with Molly Nickers earlier on when she was in, in an awkward spot and needed that galloping room. So that's uh, what we're going to be looking for here. The favourite and an odds-on favourite that he's been well supported. Dollar eighty into a dollar seventy-five in the last here at Caulfield on Bletchingley Stakes Day will be St. Lawrence for the Mar Yusuf Stable with Carleen Heffel in the saddle. Let's go to Matt Hill. Horses are loading away nicely. It's liaison who's had that to change of stables, a change of scenery with Lee and Shannon Hope coming along and Christmas Diamond, interesting horse, formerly raced 
in the United States. Going to take one more turn for its first run here in Australia. So 1,400 metres. Victorian Racing heads to Sale and Casterton tomorrow as Christmas Diamond takes the outside and they are ready. St Lawrence wanting to lunge, an attendant going in. Set, ready, racing. St. Lawrence, one of the better ones away. Danish Prince beat it out with Palenko, Netanyahu and Scantoons coming over as well. Got to fourth or fifth. Behind those first mate and also Zamawi Turbo. Well back in the field. Serious liaison Christmas Diamond. Danish Prince led. They're not going that hard from Netanyahu. And then came Scantoon, who's about three quarters of a length away out wider. Palenko, St. Lawrence fifth defence and then Turbo at the thousand. A length and a half Zamawi first mate. Two and a half lengths away way to Sirius Liaison outside of Christmas Diamond. Netanyahu eventually took it up from Scantoon. Danish Prince was looking for the sit and got it. Then came Palenko, St. Lawrence between horses, Turbo Wider. Over a length, Samawi first mate and then came Christmas Diamond and Sirius Liaison. 600 to go. Netanyahu in front from Scantoon, a long neck away. Then came Palenko, three wide the trip from Danish Prince uh, is next along the inside of St. Lawrence. Turbo Wider and then Zamawi and first mate. Netanyahu into the running. 300 metres to go. A length and a quarter. Scantoon. And then came St. Lawrence who gets its chance to the outside from Palenko and Danish Prince. Netanyahu just in front of Scantoon who's chipping away. Then St. Lawrence. Scantoon struck the front but here's St. Lawrence. Let's down now. Let's rip. And the favourite won it. St. Lawrence first over a league. Scantoon. Netanyahu and first mate from the clouds four. Then Danish Prince Palenko. Back behind them. Sirius liaison. Christmas Diamond, Turbo, and the last to complete the course, Samawi. Carleen Heffel splits the riding honours with the Metro Premiership winner-elect in Blake Shin. Well, Carleen Heffel's on her way, you'd imagine, to the Apprentices title. A couple of great steers today on strong chances in the market too as well, which I think adds some merit. You've got to have the right horse, but you've got to be able to execute under that pressure as well. She did it with Molly Nickers earlier on, and here, St. Lawrence, Found herself in a couple of tight spots through the first half of the race. Bided her time in the straight. The gap appeared. And in the end, St. Lawrence has won by an ever-increasing margin as well from Scantoon. Third in the race two years ago. Best run of his four on resumption here. Netanyahu's made a big leap off that first up run during the Swan Hill campaign. And first, mate, the emergencies run on into a top four placing as well. But St. Lawrence... I think most people on course go home pretty happy after he's been able to take out the final event of the day and make it six from seven. You did notice out in the uh, out on the lawn here at Caulfield as Carleen Heffel was able to angle St Lawrence into the clear at the top of the straight, there was a bit of noise going on out there. I think it was a very popular result here on track. And I think that this ride from Carleen Heffel, along with the ride on Molly Nickers, has really highlighted her maturity and, and where she's going as a jockey because it, it didn't work out ideally in the sense that he wasn't as brilliantly away as Danish Prince he was able to, to cross him and I think Carleen was pretty happy to be third pair sorry uh, third in the race one pair behind the leader in the box seat but when Netanyahu crossed she ended up third pair back on the inside but where I thought Carleen was able to win the race Warren Huntley was still probably a good 800 meters from home there was an opportunity to get off the heels of Danish Prince and just get outside one off the fence, which meant she had a few more options and wasn't going to be shuffled back through the field in an awkward position. And then she just stayed cool, very similarly to what she was able to do on, on Molly Nickers. And when the gap opened, had the horse underneath her to win and win quite easily. But uh, she is really going on in leaps and bounds as a jockey is Carleen Heffel, and she gets the victory. Ma Eustace, the winning trainer, Jack Turnbull catching up with Nigel. A victorious finish to the day for the state's leading stable. Ma Eustace victorious with St Lawrence, who makes it six from seven. Jack Turnbull's with us. Jack, uh, any sweaty moments through the first half of the race when Carleen was seeing the rail and then plenty of other horses? Yeah, certainly. Um, looks, he began well. He had a lunge at the gates before he broke, but um, got into a good spot. But, I mean, here at Caulfield rail out where it is, six metres, you just you just never know. But um, I think the horse put her, put himself where he got to in the run. Carleen was pretty bullish, but, um, yeah, showed a nice turn of foot. Got a real capacity to carry weight. Yes, admittedly, it might be in benchmark races when he's got more targets to come down the line, but I think that's now the first time we've seen him carry an impost north of 60 kilos. Certainly able to shoulder a hefty weight. 
Yeah, he's a big strapping lad. Uh, he tips the scales well over 500. There's plenty of substance there. So, um, yeah, he's a nice horse. He's sound and um, he's still well within the handicap where he can go through these grades before we look at having to step into black type. Um, as I said, when he won last start, I think we keep him to seven and eight furlongs this time around. That's what um, Kieran and David were suggesting. So uh, it's all going to plan. It's going to be an interesting bit of work for Reese Murphy and I imagine the rest of the team to be combing through, finding the right races for this guy because the run race has got to be getting shorter. He was an 83 rated today and that meant he had the 61 kilos. So going to be combing far and wide to try and find the right race, I'd imagine. Exactly, yeah. We'll sit down with Reese, uh, John and Ozzy. We'll uh, have a discussion, but um, it's a good place to be in. Jack, well done. Thank you. And Carleen Heffel joins us. Uh, double on the afternoon. Molly Nickers in the Vobus Gold Ingot and with a similarly short price favourite here in St. Lawrence. And Carleen, well, it was almost a little bit Molly Nickers-ish, given there was some time there where you found yourself in the phone box. How'd you get out? Yeah, it was uh, very Molly Nickers-ish. Yeah, um, just Barry one, obviously, got stuck there. And then the race shape sort of changed on the side. But I was able to get off and get in the nice 1-1. One -one and, um, yeah, he just got out in perfect, perfect timing. What do you make of this guy's talent? Not going to be much longer we're going to see him punching around in benchmark 78s. No, I don't think so. You know, he took a little bit to wind up. But when he finally got to his top, he really let down really nicely and hit line super strong. Congrats on the double. Thanks. Carleen Heffel with two on the afternoon. She wins the last aboard St. Lawrence. She won one of the features on Molly Nickers in the Vobus Gold Ingot. T Waters going back to back in the Vobus Gold Stays, but the story of the day was ingratiating for Godolphin and James Cummings with Blake Shin in the saddle winning the Group 3 Bletchingley Stakes. That completes the Melbourne leg of our coverage on Racing.com this afternoon. Big thanks to everybody named Matt in our truck. Chalal, who did a super job pushing all the buttons as well. All our TRP team who do such a fantastic job, as did Warren Huntley and Ben Ascari this afternoon. We'll send things back to Morville after the break for their final event of the day. Worth noting, protest upheld in race eight in South Australia. I hope you've enjoyed racing this afternoon here from Caulfield. Magnificent July conditions and good racing to match.